Hi everyone, I have been emotionally compromised because I was looking at the Steam page for this Coalition and I realized that I have unlocked an achievement that I didn't really pay much attention for, but it's goodest of the good cops really get Kim to trust you and now I'm and now I'm just fussy inside <laughs> because I I am on a mission to get Kim to like me and now he trusts me so I'm just I don't know I think I think I've achieved everything that I wanted to achieve in my life now makes me very happy <laughs> god all right, how's everybody doing anyway? Uh, it is Tuesday. I skipped French class because I don't fucking care about the French. Then again, I am just doing a review of everything, so I don't really mind if I skip one class. But uh, yeah, it is Tuesday. It is moderately sunny and I hate it. I want it to be just rainy or anything. And I played enough Katamari earlier to hurt my thumbs, so I am suffering right now. How's your day? <laughs> Good god, though. Alright, I'm gonna go get the game up now. Just a second here. Okay, that should be good. I think I fixed... Yes, there we go. We have audio immediately. No need to fuck around with the audio. I was doing like five different things at once to get the audio going. Alright, uh, oh yeah. Continue. I think the plan for today was to check the borscht thing. Oh, I keep forgetting that's not it. Yeah, it was to check the special borscht. Uh, we should ask Renee about the photo since we have it already. Uh, three drivers at the intersection. We haven't investigated the uh, drug th trade thing yet, but oh well. We need to find the gloves and open open the basement door. So here's what I what I plan to do. We're gonna ask Renee about the photo. We're gonna go talk about the borst. We're probably going to talk to the people that from the union that are in the wording and rags just to get it out of the way. We've kept them waiting long enough, and then we're gonna go open the apartment door. I think that's as good a plan as any. It is 8 p.m. though, and in one hour we need to get to the smoker. So hopefully we don't fuck that up. All right. God, it's late. I already forgot what we we're gonna do. Oh yeah, sir. He's still here, right? Oh. There, working class drunk. You know what this means, right? Case sold. Cracked it. All in a good day's work. Wait, what did I crack exactly? What do you mean? What did I crack? Look at how working class that drunk is. It's her husband, the missing husband, the future leader of a Ford plot. Proletarian uprising, it's uh, some third option? It's a husband. Yes, and you found him. Now go and tell the working class woman. Protect and serve, recruit. Give me a champagne, I'm going in. There's no need for champagne when there's honor, recruit. <laughs> go and tell the working class woman what you found, right now. Sure, why not? Hey ma'am, I found your husband. It's probably not your husband, but it's funnier if I think it is. <laughs> Protect and serve, madam. I found your husband. God damn it. I already told you. My husband isn't missing. But you said you didn't know where he was. And I specifically added that I didn't need to know where he was. Well, I found him, nevertheless. I'm that good. Very well, then. Where is he? There. Point to the working class drunk. Right around the corner, he has pissed himself. Our hammer toting comrade was at the bottom of those stairs. There. Excuse me? I, I don't follow. 
But there's something else hiding in her voice, though. A trace of worry. I found a working class drunk and I thought he might be yours. Right, cause working class women come with <laughs> alcoholic husbands. You know what? Remember, about that what. Never ever say what. <laughs> I'm not saying what. You were right. I do have an alcoholic husband. Oh. Although not that one. But you told me your husband's alright. I did, and he is. He's also an alcoholic. So, is he missing as well? No, he's not. Or maybe he is, I don't know. He's probably in the park, or in Shambrock somewhere. Drinking with his friends. Oh. I haven't seen him for... Well, to hell with him! Oh. There. She's worried now. Kim, is it me or do we have a uh, missing person case here? Don't worry, I'm going to find him and bring him back home, promise. Well, if he's with his friends, then he's not really missing. No need for the police to get involved. Kim, can we? I wouldn't be so sure. Man, just to be completely clear, do you want to report it to the police? Report what? He's just out drinking with his friends. No I'm God. sure the police has better things to do than to chase down local goofballs. He's fucking dead, isn't he? Not at all. The RCM is ready to chase down every goofball in town. We care about you. Honestly, I just think missing persons case are mysterious. Well, we care about you. She sighs, but you can detect a slight hint of gratitude and relief from her face. All right, go ahead. Do you have any questions? What does your husband look like? Honestly, not that different from you. Huh? So let me guess, is Disco like a late stage alcoholic then? Right, we're dealing with a cup. Late stage alcoholic then? That's one way to put it, yes. No offense. I'd also add he's a little bit chubby. <laughs> what else? He was wearing a dark brown leather jacket with a bright blue inner lining. Okay. The lining is hand sewn. I made it myself. Huh. It's his cool jacket. God knows it's too cold to run around in this, but he refuses to change. Aw. I even tried throwing it away once, but he just dug it out of the bin. <laughs> Can you believe it? Well, if that jacket is really that cool, then I can totally understand. Well, what can you do? I hope that at least that extra lining helps him keep warm at night. I wouldn't like him to catch cold. She's thinking about him out in the cold, in some park, or on the coast. Oh. And it's making her more and more worried. When did you last see him? Yesterday morning. He went to the library. He went to retrieve my book and he promised, he promised, he'd walk straight back home. Oh. Because we talked about this. We talked about not wandering off again. I, I don't know what to do. I honestly don't know what to do with his addiction. Oh, Just man. Just makes me feel weak. Gone for around 36 hours then. Damn. This is a missing persons case. It sure is. She turns away from you in an attempt to recover. I think I got it, thanks. So you are going to look for him? Yes, I will bring him back home to you. Thank you. Please do. Even though I'm sure he will return home by himself. I'm still sure of that. She tries to maintain a brave front, even though her eyes reveal the opposite. I'm sure he will too. When he does, would you let Prison 57, Kim Kitsuragi, know? <laughs> I will, of course, officer. As I said, it's probably nothing. Alright, thanks, I'll be going then. Well, the fuck up a two is gonna find your husband. We got some money for... Uh, I'm gonna go pay off my debts already. I have a feeling, and we don't have time almost. We have one hour only before we have to go meet up with the guy. Oh, what's this? It's a bowl, they're spitting it. Reeking of tobacco. God, I love this. Wait, why do I have a feeling I should talk to the kitchen guy? The man ponders his cooking oh. utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Leo said you're friends with Manana, is that true? The mention of Manana 
gets his attention. Oh? He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. They're friends. <laughs> what isn't that force you're making there? The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak. I'm pretty sure he asked you a question. He doesn't know your language. You can just say something cool in return. Yes, no. Mercury rising. Sorry, I don't understand you. Mercury rising. Hmm. Horse need more vodka? Oh. Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. <laughs> Clever move by the Union. Vodka bust! I love it, Bratan! <laughs> Turn it the fuck up and then ask for some yourself. No. Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea. Honestly, the place is a powder keg. No, no, no vodka. Cut it. The cook gives you a long, disappointed look, then turns the stove off and seems to wait for you to speak. I don't need to say anything else. Stay masculine. Well... Hey, guard. Can I help you? About my bill for tonight. Got the 20 real? Yeah, 20 real for the night. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> also, hello. Hello, Rar. Welcome. I can't believe I have to do that every day. Hello. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? Are you Lizzie, Elizabeth, Miss, Miss Beaufort? I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Titus Hardy. Even though she has excellent control over herself, something moved behind her eyes. Oh. In the way she stands. In her face. Easy Leo, to Easy Leo told me about you. He likes to talk to talk a lot. You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. You are here to question these men. Hold on. I suggest even though she has Hardy not yet. No. Ah. Talk to Titus. Why are you so aggressive? Aggressive? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Hmm. So you were spying on us. Mm. And now you represent murder suspects. Just dock workers. Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob. Enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishal. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all. And you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so ask what you came to ask. Or get back to your commanders. The world needs a financial buffer zone. No need to get emotional. The privatization is not unlawful. It's cool and funny. Maybe you're just not historic individuals? I don't know where you heard that, but it's wrong. The RCM is principled and strong, like you socialists. I like that. Good start. Let's take it a step further. Armed uprising. What are the union plans? Yeah, let's do that. Let's ask those questions. Uh, what are the union's plans? This actually gives me... Like, uh, an actual... Mm. The privatization is not unlawful, it's cool and funny. I am not sure, but... Let's ask those questions. Let's. Uh, maybe we'll talk later. I want to see what's this. Photos of men in overalls, toting guns and union placards. You see Hawthorne bushes outside. Hmm. Alright, hold on. There we go. Only you, huh? Well, hello. This is where you say your bed. Okay. Oh, oh. Detective. Okay. Don't say anything yet. First, we need to talk about your attitude. We need to talk about the man hang out man. Ha man hanged out back. Um. Don't say anything yet. Hey, hey, dipshit. You hard of hearing or some? The boss man's talking to you. Cross your arms. What is he fucking kidding? This guy high or something? Hey asshole, up here. We're talking to you. We are looking for Titus Hardy. 
We need to talk about the man ha hanged out back. Oh, this is about him. A real looker, that one. Oh, God. You sure took your time, huh? Waited for him to get real ripe and pretty for you. Oh, he was a real pretty boy. Hanging up there, letting out that pretty boy smell. What the fuck? I can't for the life of me understand why you did it. I mean, I would have just left him up there. No. You must really like cleaning up other people's shit. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. Do a head count first. Connect these men to the tracks you saw in the yard. Chances are they're going to match. Scan the room. Starting from the right. Boot size, 44. Blonde oh. man, in his 30s. Overbearingly masculine. Overbearingly masculine? Sitting on his right. Standard working boots. Size 45 or 46. Eldest in the room. Probably mid 50s. Smoker. Quiet. Across at the other table. Hobnailed working boots. Size 43. Gang tattoos. Mesk or Sarah Maritzian in his late 30s, early 40s. If this is electrochemistry. Hello? On my back. I think I just saw my, uh, I think I just saw everything, like, go offline. Oh, that is, that is very bad. <laughs> oh, well, I think I have internet now. For some reason, it just went off, like... I will it went out went out for like a second. Yeah, I, I I picked it up real fast at least, but yeah, it, it went it went offline. <laughs> you didn't miss a lot. Uh you missed uh there is an eight hardy and it's a woman. I'm not really sure how far you actually saw, but yeah. You're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. <laughs> I'm watching you. Anyway, but yeah, they're not talking about this. It's a pretty hardy boys matter, and... Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. Yes. So it's just like I could not tell if it was playing current stream or recent video. Yeah, There's I... no point in pushing it further, he thinks. This is already a victory. We'll learn more about this eighth hardy sooner or later. To show the place recent video if streaming is not live. Ah. Yeah, th that was that was a mess, huh? <laughs> well, the man hanged in the backyard. Did you do it? The pretty boy. You guys really love talking about that pretty boy. Oh yeah. Funny, but my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Why is there a container belt around the dead man's neck? Container belt, like we use in the harbor. Yes. Why? Because we took it from the harbor where we were. Then we went out back and used it to hang him. Oh? We did this together, all of us, until he was dead. That's why there's a container belt around his neck. Aha, so you just confessed the murder? Goddamn right. I. No. These oh. seven honest men have equally come forth. They told you what happened so that you don't waste any more of your time. Oh my god. All seven together. They're diluting responsibility. It's an anti-arrest tactic. You murder him just like that, Nori Morris? Who called the shots that night? When you did when did this hanging incident occur? Where did you kill him? How did you kill him? Why did you kill him? Why? Cause he was worthless mercenary scum. Oh god. And he stepped out of line in my Town. So he was a mercenary, that's it? I am. He stepped out of line. Hmm. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Ah. Uh. Had Kohoi and Semenin written all over him. Ex Oranese Special Forces. A live grenade. Right here in our bar. Oh, God. This one has a special gripe with him coming here. I can't prove it. 
But I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Hold on. How do you even know he was in Special Forces? Cause one night, he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm on these goddamn Special Forces, and I'm gonna fuck you all! What? Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there, sang some R&E's paratrooper song, and said he's gonna fuck everyone. We couldn't believe it either, but he fucking did. The right mic. there. Like some kind of animal. This is a serious violation of the karaoke code. Thank you, conceptualization. Right. But what did he do actually do wrong? Okay, besides cramps against karaoke, what did he actually do wrong? Wrong? He harassed women. Raped one. Oh, harassed God. Harassed workers. Threatened to kill some as a warning. I... From rape to harassment to threats of violence. Why the strange de-escalation? He regrets mentioning it. Hopes you didn't notice. Oh. To kill us all. If we don't open the gates. If we don't let the scabs in. If we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. Yeah. He said it was his favorite joint now. Started to come in here every night. Drinking. Grabbing girls. Grab one of ours mid karaoke. Right there on the stage. Jeez. Grab someone? Yeah. This girl's on the mic. A beautiful girl. Young. Gets into the second verse of Lover Lake. The fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. Show me your cunt! Why what don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle. Doesn't even fall down. Was this the same girl who was... You know... Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. My God. He got the out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? Seems like they don't want to talk about that rape Titus Jesus mentioned. Jesus Christ. Why not? This is a serious allegation. Make them talk about it. Right, but who did it then? It's a very serious allegation. No, you're not getting the name. That's a Martinez matter. I'm not discussing it with you clowns. I I enjoy this game. I just wish I just wish sometimes that it came with a little bit of a content warning, I guess. Despite the stone warning, you can slip one more question in. I'm gonna ask for one last time. Who did it? Titus, do not answer. You have been forthcoming enough. Fuck off, Carl. She's gone through enough without you harassing her too. She doesn't need more embarrassment. What are you talking about? Embarrassment. If someone has been sexually assaulted, we need to... What you need is to get the fuck out of my face. Oh, God. I've had enough of explaining myself to you fucks. He's dead. It's done. And the song just picks up. As you can see, these men can only take so much baseless scrutiny. I'm doing my best to keep the situation civil, but... Okay, well, when did it occur? You don't have to answer any of his questions. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. How long have you known the victim? Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Quiet. <laughs> he came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy. Huh? Uh, the Pines Cow, you mean Joyce Messier? The representative for White Pines? The same company you're striking against? No. I mean the Pines Cow. The stupid ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. What? But you know what? Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer. Your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Well... Who called the shots that night? Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. Oh god. You can't arrest a hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A trick question. 
Don't let her lead the conversation. I don't have to. One of them has more composers than the others. No, but seriously, who calls the shots around here? <laughs> who do you fucking think does? You do. You give the commands. I thought she did. The biggest animal dominates her. I'm guessing it's a big one. Gangs are usually run by the oldest most venerable member. And Farad clearly runs the union. You asked him, right? Is the eight hearted boy the one who's missing? The big dick. Titus, no one was thinking. <laughs> that there's any question who's the leader. That's how he would have ended it. Oh, God. Titus won't let him. No. 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 Fuck no. The big dick is right <laughs> here. Asshole. You're looking at it. Right. Fucking. Here. Disregard the outburst, officer. <laughs> None of the boys have any comments on their power relations. That night, they acted as one. That's all. Well, how did you kill him? We hanged him up by his neck. Until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? No. The autopsy showed there were no ligature marks. His hands were not tied. Can you explain that? Um, we... <sighs> Look, I'm not gonna play 20 questions with you, capo. I'll say it again. We killed him. Okay. Yeah, I knocked him out. Came up behind him and clapped him in the back of the head. He went down like a sack of sun. Well, you just confessed. That's right, lawman. And then we hanged the fuck. Mr. Tats, what did you use to knock the victim down? Where did this all action where did all this action take place? Things aren't quite right here, are they? Actually, fuck! They're admirably, surprisingly composed. The entire room. Damn it. Given how many questions have <laughs> lobbed their way. All of them? Maybe one of them is fidgeting, cracking under the pressure? Well, this one. But he's always fidgeting, so don't get your hopes up. Uh... Where did all this action take place? Right fucking here. Eugene already told you that the fuck had started coming to our bar. Yeah, man, weren't you listening? Mr. Tats, what did you use to knock the victim down? My fucking elbow copper. <laughs> Summer unboxing a style. Right, I have other questions. Like what, copper? Like, uh, you murdered him just like that? No remorse? How many people have you sent to the Shays? Ever felt remorse for them? Or send them to reunion to rot? For 20 years? For life? God, yes, but all of these were bad people, criminals, that's come of the earth. Look, I'm just doing my job. What we do is different. We enforce the law. You just keep people like it's nothing. Honestly, I drink so much I can't really remember any, anyone I've sent behind bars. Honestly, you're a cop. You probably have done something bad. But I think the least fuck, fucked up one would be this one. But Because this would just give them something against me. I don't like the just following orders thing. And I don't think they were wrong in killing that guy. But well, they're criminals, I guess. Rest assured, lawman. None worse than our guy. Yeah. He got what was coming to him. Yeah, I agree. So what are you gonna do, huh? Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back no. to your stations where you belong. No, I won't. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first-degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent -a cop is gonna hear from us. Real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beaten. So, I can establish my authority, but it's godly. And it's not going to work, so I'm gonna leave for now. I have to go meet a smoker. How do you feel, huh? I've yeah. got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? Are you the hearty girl? I am not. You could be Liz. You could be anything. You could even be a model. <laughs> even a mod? Glenn, I went to law school. <laughs> I am an attorney. He's right. With a face like that, she could be on the cover of Le Debutant International. Shut the fuck up, Electrochemistry. 
He's right, you know, you're very pretty. Get a grip, Glenn. She went to law school. So fucking what? Lots of models are actually really smart people, fuckwad. No, Glenn. They aren't. <laughs> this didn't change her opinion of you. Damn it. It's not her. She's not a hardy girl. Definitely. Why, well, fine. Oh, hey, the, the window. Behind the dock workers. A ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. Mysterious door scene and minus 12 is not time yet. I am going to wait until it's not its time. But squint. There's a little slide panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in spring. It's still too cold outside. Revert. Alright. Oh, money, money, money. Yes. Alright, let's go meet the smoker. Also, my cat is on my lap now. She is being adorable. An adorable little donut. And there's people just going broom right outside, huh? It's this way. Hold on. The only thing that I do not enjoy... Oh, hey, Annette is gone. But anyway, the only thing that I do not enjoy about having moved here is that I can actually hear every single goddamn car that comes by. But back then, I didn't have to. Anyway, what's with this wall? Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Oh. In the dimming light, some things become clearer, and Cindy's artistic impulses are infectious, so why am I looking at this wall? Because <gasps> you see it, finally. This wall is sublime. Look at it. The shadows, the colors. Oh? Let the conceptual joy flow into your pupils and blossom into your thoughts into thoughts in your blame. All brain. the other walls on all the other houses must make a pilgrimage in adoration of this. The uncontested pinnacle of Warcraft. Color peeled Warcraft. from the very face of God. More! Oh, wall father. <laughs> Kim, I must paint this wall and add even more beauty to it. Huh? He sounds tired of it all. First, I know you're tired, Kim. But take another look at this wall. Draw nourishment from its beauty. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure I'll find the materials. Then we can come back to this magnificent wall. I suppose we have to pass by it again at some point anyway. <laughs> Resignation. Where is the smoker? What was the thing? This is apartment number 28. All right. We're visiting apartment number 28. Mr. Smokey Man. God, you know, my favorite thing about cats are their noses. They're adorable. Hey, ma'am, how you doing? Give me a moment. Nope. Balcony exit. Balcony, then. Oh, wait, this isn't the side, it's the other side. Fuck, I have to go back. I wonder if Cindy's home, actually. Oh, there she is, never mind. Wait, no, that's that's the... the other room. Oh, man. Alright. Balcony time. Let's go, Kim, let's go. Where are you running? Why are you running? Balcony. This game, this game has a very interesting soundtrack. Alright. Oh. Hear distant traffic. Night is falling on the city. Maroon glow of light pollution rises from the east. Curtain shifts just... Just a little. Someone is watching from within. Hey, man. Hey, Martin Martinez. Guess what, Martin Martinez? John Damarie, you found me. Yes. His slender figure is backlit by city lights. Its distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. It feels like a Friday. He seems to be in a good mood tonight. We got your hint. Found the key right under the stone. 
Beautiful. <laughs> so tell me, are you here to make things right again? That's what I'm not aiming for, yes. Honestly, I'm just trying to not screw anything up. I'm not going to make it things just right. I'm going to make them spectacular. I was hoping to talk to you about, about, to a possible witness. Your balcony overlooks a murder scene. I'm going to make them spectacular. Beautiful. <laughs> I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step oh. in. He's already waiting. By the way, I'm really digging the view here. Point to the city skyline. Is it Friday tonight? It feels like Friday. Why do I want to meet your friend? I really like the view. Mm hmm That's why I chose this place. Martinez is special, isn't it? Yeah. Wait. Suddenly you are digging things? <laughs> is it Friday tonight? It feels like Friday. Yeah. It does feel like the end of the week. Such gentle weather. Why would I want to meet your friend? Trust me. You do. Very well. I'll talk to him, but first I want to talk to you. I have so many questions. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark and the neighboring windows have lit up one by one. Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, <gasps> disappearing into the bush. I want the cat. Besides, I've got to run. Oh. He's going to leave you alone again. That's sad. But I just found you again. Just look at it. It's a beautiful night. Who's going to stay in on a night like this? A man on high heels stumbles out of a basement club. Oh. Music blasting over the entire district. It's chilly. And as the chemicals hit his nervous system, a thousand shivers ripple through his body. Only if you promise I will talk again. It's important. Something flutters in the corner of the lieutenant's mouth as <laughs> you're saying those words. We'll talk. Just not tonight. Are you jealous, Kim? Take care, all right? Bye. <laughs> and he's gone again. Looks like it's becoming a theme for him. He's always leaving. Why is he always leaving, Kim? There's something so different about him that I just can't put my finger on. Different, of course. His shirt. Why is his shirt always unbuttoned? He's such a good listener and I like talking to him. There's just something so mysterious about the way he talks and moves. He smells good. Why on earth does he smell so good? Kim, <laughs> Harry, you bisexual disaster. Why is his shirt always unbuttoned? His shirt. His shirt. His shirt. His shirt. No, I don't know why his shirt is always unbuttoned. <laughs> his mouth tightens as though he's trying to hold something back. Come on, detective. Let's go. We've got a potential witness to interview. His Sunday friend, remember? My god. <laughs> All right, Sunday friend. I want your money. Quarterly Business Magazine. Empty ashtray. Dish is soaked up in a pot. Flyers for underground parties. Dates for open lectures at a local university. Oh, what is this? Samaran conical hat. Why not? An exquisite canopy med bed made of metal. Buckets of paint on a layer of old m newspapers. Old photo of, of the same apartment dated year 01. Expensive men's perfume lingers in the air. Party dragon silk robe. Drama and electrochemistry. I am not using this, but I might as well just wear it. I hope Kim likes it. Officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia. Sunday friend. My name is Charles Vildrouin, and I am an official with the coalition government. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur la Clé. Oh god. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. Oh? Hanging? What a drag. He seems like a cultured gentleman. You should ask him about the finer things. <laughs> Before we go on, I absolutely have to inquire about this wonderful canopy. Before we get to that, let me ask you... When, l tell me where you got this beautiful silk robe from. We'll get to that, right after you tell me the story behind the black Samaran hat. The canopy, though. Oh, yes. 
My friend has a great eye for these things. He refuses to tell me where it came from. It's a mystery. <laughs> I believe they call this type of frame industrial. It's very comfy. That's really all I can tell you about it. <laughs> the lieutenant takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. Okay, so... Can you tell me about your friend? Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. All right, what's Kedra? How do you to become friends? Still haven't told me who he is. What are you doing in this apartment by yourself? What's Kedra? Kedra is a candidate member of APIS. But between you and me, their potential membership is a more contentious issue. What do you mean? That it's never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. What is this EPIS you keep talking about? EPIS is a very special program developed by the Moral Intern to support certain Occidental nations. It began as a unified system of weights and measures, which proved to be a wild success. Nothing but kilograms and centimeters as far as the eye can see. What? It was such a wild success that we expanded it into an economic union for the processing of steel. Another success. And between you and me, the moral in turn feels emboldened by this success. Emboldened to take EPIS to the next level. Okay, but like, what does it stand for? Why, it stands for progress and stability, like the moral in turn as a whole. No, what do the letters stand for? It's been such a wild, extraordinary success thus far. We are very excited to take it to the next level. You don't even hear the words I'm saying, do you? A supranational political alliance. The United States of Occident. Is it going to be... Is it going to be like this place here? You mean Revachol? No. It's going to have transparent democracy. Is Revachol going to be part of the EPIS? It's one day going to be a candidate member of EPIS, sure. Except that candidate members never become full members. Didn't you say that didn't you say that candidate members never become real members? No, no. Candidate members do become members. Why do we even have the whole system in place if they don't? It just takes time. Time and evaluation. Oh boy. But we were talking about my friend here, not politics. How did you two even become friends? How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the insula Indian Isola? Oil platforms ablaze in the night? Civil wars lasting for years. Oh my god. Finally, the international community is forced to step in. What are you talking about? No one becomes friends that way. Au contraire. It's how millions of people end up where they are. Meeting the people they meet. It's how I came here. And my friend, too. You still haven't told me who he is. Sorry. Who? Your friend, the smoker on the balcony. We were just talking about him. But I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is a cornerstone of our civilization. So all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study the arts? Fine, but what's his real name? Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. So all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study the arts? He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. Which arts? He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. <laughs> Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? The world is open wide for a talented youth like him. Well, what are you doing in this apartment by yourself? I'm just enjoying the view. What view? It's dark outside. Isn't it rude for your friend to leave you alone like this? We're old friends. Nothing's taboo between us. He comes and goes. Oh, they fucking. I'm sure you'll see him around. He's very active. I'm Wait, just enjoying... What view? Listen. Oh. Baby is crying in the neighboring apartment. Someone's baby is crying. No, listen. The Insulindian Bay. What about it? This place used to be a luxury accommodation before the revolution. Apartments, of course, were much bigger then. A few walls have been added here and there, leaving some of the tenants without a private bathroom or a kitchen. But the million real view stays. You can't take that away. Well, I was asking about your friend. My friend comes and goes. I'm sure you'll see him around. He's a busy bee. A busy bee? 
What an odd choice of words. Well, I had something else in mind. I'm all ears, officer. So, what's an official like you doing in Martinez? The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. Inflation is a killer, like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. The economy impacts the entire international community, which is why it requires international oversight. Okay, but are you? what are you doing here in this apartment? So, you're some kind of bureaucrat? What is this international community? What is supply stability? What are you doing here? Ah, uh, well, I'm renovating it. Mm -hmm. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. Oh my this, god. This, of course, happened when the coalition forces landed here. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. So you're some kind of bureaucrat? Yes. As I said before, I am a commissioner <laughs> from Sur La Clé working for the Institute of Price Stability. This is one of the main projects of the Moral Inter. So what is this international community? La Communauté Internationale is what Rivacholians colloquially call the coalition. In other words, the nations that stopped the disaster of the revolution. What do I call the coalition? Your employer, technically speaking. The governing authority of Rivachol. The RCM is but one part of this provisional administration. I've heard about this moral intern before, but I want to know more. It's the international organization for moralists. Hence, Moralist International. The <gasps> Institute of Price Stability is just one of its many mind babies, as is the coalition. Turn to Kim. So what I'm hearing is we're moralists and bitches? Oh, so we're actually working for the moral intern. That doesn't seem so bad. We're moral intern bitches? Doing one's job doesn't automatically make one anyone's bitch. <laughs> Besides, there are more nefarious powers to work for than the moral intern. Are you a good... Are you a moralist? But of course. But why? Because moralists believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values. Lieutenant, are you a moralist? Hmm? Me? I... Uh, I'm a lieutenant of the RCM, dedicated to maintaining law and order in Ravachol. A very moralist answer. The lieutenant is practiced in the art of putting on a show for one's superiors. <laughs> but what is a normal, stable world? Martinez doesn't seem very normal or stable to me. Martinez? No. Martinez is something else. What about the rest of Ravachol? Is it part of the normal world? Ravachol is generally difficult. It's led by an interim government, which means it hasn't yet achieved full democracy. Okay. But they are working towards it. You're all doing very well here, relatively speaking. I don't think I'm a moralist. Moralism sounds incredibly boring. I'm more action. Moralism is the ideology of foreign occupiers. Rebachol must be governed by Rebacholians. Democracy is meaningless, Sham, as long as working class is under the, uh, the boot heel of capital. It's like every time I'm talking to people, I'm choosing option D. None of the above. Is that moralism? <laughs> well, it is meaningless as long as the working class is under the boot heel. <clears throat> Of course, the detective's personal views do not represent the views of the RCM. Ah, my <laughs> friend. But the lesson of the revolution is that communism does not work. It didn't work because the coalition crushed it violently. We just haven't tried real communism yet. And you're telling me this world here is working out well? It's moving towards the right direction, and that's all that matters. Progress is measured in centimeters, my friend. Huh. Now, enough of this delightful political interlude. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? What is the price stability? It is the most important thing. Oh my god, the light, the light changed and it freaked me out. That doesn't tell me anything. It's the central goal of any sound monetary policy. Maintaining the price stability is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity, which is essential for maintaining high levels of employment. Everybody take a sip of water. Right. Which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Basically, it makes sure the price of bread doesn't change. Ah. Precisément. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. Too much deflation, it becomes too cheap for bakers to produce. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just below 2%. 2% of what? But not too far below, no. Too below is also bad. Below but close to 2%. You're not answering my questions at all. The coalition believes in the importance of informing the public about the benefits of the price stability. 
My God. Transparency is one of our principles. Would you like an informational pamphlet? Okay, sure, give me a leaflet. A sound monetary policy is essential for addressing uncertainty. Stability is the raison d'être of the moral inter. It's the reason why I identify as a moralist. But oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. That's too bad. Boo. You can always call our information line. Making information available is part of the moral intern's commitment to transparency. Well, tell me about Sir Leclerc. What's there to say? Sur la Clé is a modern, urbanized country that measures very high on the Human Development and Freedom Index. Mostly, though, it's known as the executive heart of EPIS. Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged countries. Revachal mm. is only one of its many darlings whose progress it supports and cherishes. Darling? That can't be an official designation. What makes Revachal sur, sur la Clef's... Darling. Because a great percentage of Rivachol's culture hails from Sur la Clé. Sur la Clé. Its language, its people, its cuisine even. Or at least in the downtown La Delta area. Jamrock and other parts of the international zone have been mercifully spared of Sur la Clé's love for meatballs and mashed potatoes. <laughs> Enough business. Let's talk about something Whatever else. Whatever you wish, officer. So, you actually witnessed the lynching? I'm sorry to say I did, officer. This is just the break we've been looking for. Easy, detective. No need to jump to conclusions. <laughs> is it because you did it, Mr. V. Wangla? Start from the beginning. Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. Oh, this guy is full of bullshit, isn't he? What do you mean, like in a play? It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. Oh. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. Oh god. Sounds like the victim was unconscious, or at least incapacitated. Well done, detective. Oh, thank you. Who were they? Can you describe them? I couldn't see their faces well, and there were quite a few of them. But they were very loud and very... Martinez. <laughs> Let's just say that the laboring classes can get rather expressive with their profanities. Oh, shut it. How many of them were there? I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? The lieutenant sends you a sharp look at the mention of that number. Huh. Were any of them huge? Like 200 kilograms huge? That's a giant you're describing. No, they were all quite human. <laughs> as far as I could tell. Did you... Did any of them look like drummers? Drummers? Why? No. But then... I don't know what a drummer is supposed to look like. I think <laughs> we can drop the drummer angle. That was my bad. Oh. <laughs> what happened next? I went back inside. Were you able to see anything from inside? Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see. But I could still hear their voices. Mm. They were threatening to kill that poor man. You said you saw it. Were they men, women? All men, I presume. But again, I couldn't see very clearly. What ethnicity were they? I believe they were mostly white. Though I believe I saw two Aeropagites among them. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a mask accent. What happened next? Well, that's the strangest part, officer. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. What do you mean nothing happened? They lynched a the guy. Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts, no anything. What did you call the RCF? You're right, of course. That is what one is supposed to do in such circumstances. Mm. I was simply in shock. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what time was all this happening, approximately? All I can say is that it was late. You didn't check your watch? My watch? Yes, now I remember. It was 30 minutes past midnight, give or take. So let me get this straight. You didn't actually witness the hanging itself, did you? No, I didn't see the corpse until the following day. It seems this wasn't the break you were hoping for. Aww. I think we have everything we need. Thank you for talking to us, Mr. Villodroin. Of course. Anything I can do to assist the RCF. Uh, wait. I'm sorry to say I did, officer. Is it because you did because it? Because I did it? <laughs> My apologies, I misspoke. I mean, what did you see? 
Officer, it's very difficult to describe. What do you mean? It was just. I was Hold on, on. the balcony. That's when I. Sounds like the victim. What happened wasn't. next? I went back inside. Were you able to? Officer, the yard was pitch black. What happened next? Well, that's the. Eventually, their shouts. That does seem strange. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what? All I can say uh, is my watch. Okay. No, I didn't. It seems. I think. Of course. Well, anything that's all I, I, I need. A moment, officer. Oh. Do you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. Hold on, why can't we talk later? It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. Huh? And I'm pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. I'm not going anywhere. <sighs> I'm not going anywhere, I just want to take a look around in this apartment. Sure, go ahead. It's a beautiful space. Let me know if you have any further questions. What do I have here? <laughs> well, I can probably... My god, I am looking terrible. Kim, what do you think about me? I want to talk to Kim. Yes? Nothing. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else of note in this in this apartment though. But I do like my hat. I wonder what Kuno would have to say about it. Well, all right. So we've established that it was actually eight people more or less. But other than that, I don't think we have a lot. Let's see. Oh yeah, we have another skill point. Wait. We can do the mirror, the knickknack stand, the punch cloak, clock, the cargo container door again. But it's a little bit late, isn't it? It's like, how late? 22. We should go and... Call it a night for these two. That will also let me do the um, the mirror check again. I don't know if I want to stop the expression though. Because it's kind of funny. It will make me sad if I stop smiling. I don't want to look like, you know, dead. Hi, Kunoez. God, you know I should probably start making myself some coffee before these things. I don't know why I'm so goddamn sleepy, but I think it's because I'm uh, like... I don't know, I'm just tired. Oh. You know, I just had an idea. Can you imagine we could like get in here and all the way into this store? We could probably steal something. <laughs> why do I want to steal things? Oh, the music is getting. Oh, things are calm again. Is it time yet? Behind the dock workers, a seal. Not ah, not time yet. Ah, I keep thinking I can just press escape and exit out of that. Let's go upstairs, Kim. My bestie, my oomphie, my mew tool. Actually, we should probably ask this person. The door is closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. I'm so alone. Why are you doing this? Don't do this to me. Beauty, don't abandon me like in all this ugliness. I'm so alone. The door is indifferent. To your loneliness. Still no answer. Still nothing. The lieutenant gives you a quick <laughs> glance. He doesn't like where this is going. Leave. I'm sorry, Kim. You wanna do a end of day briefing, Kim? Together? Come on, it's a date.
Yes? You don't want to do an end of break briefing with me? You'll make me cry, you know. Maybe he'll say it once I go into my room, though. See you in the morning. Oh. Bye, Kim. I truly do love you. Goodbye. Oh, he's gone. Words fail to describe how rank sm it smells in here. They should have sent a poet. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Okay. Damn it. So I can't I can't fix that, but hold on. Pry bar, flashlight, chain cutters, let's go. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. <laughs> In it, your face adorned with the expression. You should Chain cutters to fix the faucet. Stop steam from fucking up the mirror. Come on. The faucet is quite terribly yes. mangled, but you just might be able to twist its parts into place. Yes, I will. You handle the chain cutters deftly, applying just enough pressure. The faucet regains a recognizable shape. The steam stops. Yes. Told you that you needed those chain cutters. Everything is connected. Everything has a purpose. Thank you, interfacing. The mirror begins to clear slowly without you having to wipe it. Electrochemistry. Attempt to stop the expression from happening. Let's see what happens. Still not happening. <laughs> it won't come off that easy. Fine, leave the mirror for now. <laughs> I already miss Kim. I wish Kim was here. What if I take off my shoes? All right, uh, let's go meet the reptilian the brain. The bed is still cold from the broken window, and not too inviting. Go to sleep. Hello, the reptilian bed brain. Is still cold from the wind blowing in from the broken window. The mattress creaks as you close your eyes and try your hardest to fall asleep. Oh boy. Here it's we are again, my broken bird. The waves are coming, carrying you away. But you can't go. No. You have to stay always half aware of yourself. My god. You're not cooperating, brother man. Why? It's your disgusting body. Even through your sleep you feel a vague discomfort suffusing it. Your belly and your sides are unpleasantly tender. You wish you could curl up into a fetal ball of safety. But you cannot because of the pain. Oh no, it's Metal Gear. And there's a lot of it ever present in your organs. It's like every one of them has their own nasty song to sing. <laughs> that pain in your right side is your enlarged liver, by the way. As oh for your kidneys, you've really been compounding the damage lately. Yeah. Every cell in your body is moaning in agony, asking, what did we ever do to you? I'm sorry, cells, it's all me, it's my fault. It's all the system's fault, the system failed me. This body's worthless anyway, no one does anything nice to it. I'm sorry, cells. Now, you're finally thinking about something oh other than God. yourself. Let's see how far that'll get you. I just got an achievement, by the way, titled literally the sorriest cup in the world. <laughs> These are just my desserts. I will endure this pain with dignity. Wait, wasn't this it? the express to fuck all borrow? I'm an artist and live with damage to my art. I think I need medical attention. Oh, yes. They'll check you out. Give you some pills. Make it all okay. The Wonder Maker. Yes. Don't be stupid, Harry. It's not happening. Please. They don't make new kidneys and livers in hospital. All hospital. you've got to do is pray to God it passes and stare 
at the flickering darkness. She said uh, they don't make kidneys in the hospital, and I was like, envoys hospital. You're just stuck here <laughs> in the half world. Could try looking at other people, really looking. But why would you want to start doing that? Just get me out of here then. Back to the other place. I will. I'm looking at people all the time. I like them. Just get me out of here. Oh, baby boy. You're already in the other place. Oh, God. There's no nourishment for you tonight. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe if you, you know, like, took a lot of drugs. No electrochemistry. Before you go to sleep. That'd do the trick. No. Maybe if you cracked the damn thing, then you'd feel satisfied and tired. Holding the picture puzzle in your hands. Complete. Maybe if you weren't so hard on yourself. Oh. What do you think you're doing right now? Coming to some greater awareness? Look at all these lights blinking in and out of existence. Thoughts! You're just pretending that you're asleep. Even to yourself. Jesus Christ. While the world goes on without you. Let it. Let it. Jesus fucking Christ. But it never seems to let you go, does it? Time to rise and wipe that shining sweat off as best you can. Gather your bearings. Rock and roll. Goodbye. <laughs> Why is my own body so mean to me? Then again, that's literally the question of the century, isn't it? Owie. Get up. Get up, Harry. Harry. Oh. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. And I can't stop the expression. The bed is still cold from the broken. No time to rest yet. Can I fix this? The window stands broken in its frame. The morning light hurts your eyes. Very well then. This is Kim's room then. Kim, I miss you. Where are you? Where is my special boy? Oh, there's new people. Good morning. Good morning, Kim. Yes? I just wanted to talk to you. Hey, guard. Can I help you? Goodbye. So, hey, who are you guys? The woman in an RCM patrol officer's uniform. Winces as she notices you. Horse-faced woman? I would really prefer not to talk to you right now. Oh? A patrol officer is the lowest rank in the RCM. Below lieutenant and sergeant. Hold on, you're a patrol officer of the RCM? And I'm, I'm on a murder investigation. Are you the cavalry? Is everything all right? Are you a patrol officer? Yes, I am. I'm a cop too. I know. Here's the real deal. <laughs> it's hard to tell whether he's sarcastic or sincere, but if you had to guess, you would say the lieutenant is being sarcastic. Oh, I love him. I'm on a murder investigation. Are you the cavalry? I'm definitely not the cavalry. Is everything all right? Why don't you want to talk to me? I don't know. I mean, uh, why would I want to talk to you? Have I wronged you? I've done that to a lot of people. It's good to see another cop. I thought Kim and I were the only ones. God, I don't know why. I'm just trying to try, trying to do my best. Let's just do this by the book, okay? Why? I bring I bring word of the end to come. Of course he does. <laughs> word of the end to come. Then something changes in her. It's pity. Pity comes over her. Oh god. Okay, fine. Let's talk. What did you want? Mm. What does one talk about with a fellow officer? So what present are you from? What precinct? Present. <sighs> Am I from? God. He doesn't know. <laughs> Fucking deranged lunatic. Bruh. You're getting an intellectually unsatisfying vibe from this conversation. Maybe you're doing something wrong. You're the police, right? Cool, so am I. I don't... I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, Judith. Wait, is... 
Is he please? Me? No. I'm just a man with sunglasses. I like wearing sunglasses inside. Sunglasses and a fucking wig. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are you, the police doing here? I'm just looking out for... You? No one. I'm just a man with sunglasses. And you are? A horse-faced woman. You're a fucking asshole. <laughs> are we done here? <laughs> okay, goodbye. You look like shit. <laughs> and I don't mean that as a metaphor. You look like shit, asshole. I don't look like shit. I know, it's intentional. The last couple days have been rough. Looks the matter. It's what's on the inside that does. Look, it's intentional. Like undercover? Well, as far as these guys go, this is one of the best I've seen. I mean, I could swear you're an actual bomb. Oh, come on, Jean. It looks like it's been a rough week on him. <laughs> it's not just this week. What do you want? There's something about this guy that matches with a face in your head. A oh similar, God. but different face. There's something strange about this guy. Figure it out. You know <gasps> what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. Tell me the truth. Do you know me from somewhere? Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Oh? Another life. From where? From another life? Yes, from another life. A different life. Oh? Maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? 69! He seems to be observing <laughs> you through the reflective glass of his eyewear. There's no reply. Perhaps repeat it? 99... 99,999,999.9? That's exactly right. Down to a fraction. Really? No, not really. <laughs> uh, 41st? Okay, okay. That's plausible. <laughs> That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. <laughs> somewhere good. Let's talk more about the hypothetical Station 41 you mentioned. Kim, who is this guy? Mm -mm. I'm not getting involved in this. <laughs> it's not my style, he thinks, glancing at the man in sunglasses and the woman beside him. Oh boy, they're mad at him. No wonder. He just doesn't recognize them. <laughs> Let's talk about, about this hypothetical Station 41. Okay. Oh, he's not saying this. Okay. Oh, the hypothetical 41. Yeah, let's fantasize about that. He blinks aggressively. I'm not busy. You're not busy. Let's just play around. And he just says, okay. So what would our relationship be in this alternate years of our universe? Do you have a crime to solve? What is our relationship? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? Like partners in crime or... You seem like a cool guy. I'd love to have you. You seem a bit of a drag. No offense, but I could do better. Kim's cooler than you. I'm sure he's fucking flattered. <laughs> but Kim is not part of his thought experiment. In this one, we are partners. The lieutenant is silent. Like partners in crime or...? No, because in this thought experiment, we are police officers in a police station. <laughs> we don't do crimes. We're not crime bros. Come on, stop it. <laughs> do you have a crime to solve? Oh, no, no, no. You see, I enjoy watching other better cops solve crimes. And let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing you work. This isn't helping. <laughs> Who has seen our imaginary police station? You're not going to believe this, but... Police officers. <laughs> yes, sir. Solving crimes, locking up bad guys and... And get this, and not getting that drink on at two o'clock. <laughs> Just some regular boring motherfuckers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far-out son of Lang. Who is the far-out son of Lang? Oh, it's you, you eccentric genius. <laughs> I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. Want to tell me more about him or her? Not even a little bit. It's an urban myth about an <laughs> officer who is so far undercover he can't remember who he is. As I say, it's just an urban myth. You are not the son of Lang. Thank you, Kim. He's trying to protect you from further rough handling, dished out by this sunglassed man. <laughs> okay, yes, you get the joke. Leave it at that. I can't imagine it anymore. <sighs> Neither can I, partner. Neither can I. Oh, God. It's a mere second, but it feels like you saw something. A gram of compassion in that sadness. Got some questions for you. I'm a cop. About what? You don't look like a cop. You know what you look like. Like a pro prophet? Like a revolutionary? Like a some sack of shit? Like a yamle? No, no, you tell me. Like a man down in his luck? I'm trying real hard here, man. 
Like a prophet? Not the prophet shit again. <laughs> again? <laughs> now will you ask some questions for me? No. <laughs> Why not? Because it's not my job. Why don't you go and fucking do yours and solve this damn hanging? If you don't want to answer questions, maybe you want to hear me say things. Actually, I don't want to hear you say things. Come on, Jean. Okay, say things. I want to hear you say things. Hear that? <laughs> he wants you to say things. Say one. Suddenly, out of nowhere, case-related things start popping up in your head. Okay, I'm doing this investigation. A man is hanged. So, do you know who hanged him? Yeah, not yet. Yeah, I can see that. Hey, why am I even telling you this? I don't know. Why are you? Who knows why we do the things we do? <laughs> Somehow, bouncing those ideas off the man with sunglasses felt calming. Like you've done it before. Oh my god, it's my ex. Oh my god, there's more. You want something more? What is it? Let's talk about the hanged man again. Okay, why not? So, I uh. don't know. Oh my god, there's more. You want something more? What is it? He knows me. Okay then, see you around. Watch out for yourself, loser. That voice, so very familiar. Oh? Did you hear it when calling to your station and reporting your badge missing? Wait, your voice. I recognize it. Oh really? I wonder where. I lost my badge recently. When I called it, the to report it missing, you were there. That's the where you remember me from? <laughs> yes, I haven't seen you before. Maybe. I have a bit of memory trouble. You don't say. Goodbye then. No! The voice thing was a coincidence. Run along, asshole. Okay, the man with the sunglasses and his hypothetical Station 41. Weird, right? I know, super weird. I guess it was kind of weird, yes. No, this whole interaction is perfectly normal. There's something missing here. Something you can't put our finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy, and you'll probably get laughed at, but still. I was thinking the same thing. I should ask him if we're from the same station. Yes, just cross it off the list. It's probably not true, though. Well, he's my Again? ex. I can't believe this shit. <laughs> Look, I just have to ask. Are we from the same police station? I'm going to say no. Just to see what you'll say to that. What'd you say? Yeah, probably not. I don't remember you from anywhere. God fucking shit. <laughs> None of this is great news for him. Okay, I was clearly wrong. He is a firefighter, male nurse, animal control agent, something of that kind. Oh my Not god. Not a cop. Go on with your cop work. Don't let me stop you again. <laughs> I'm going to okay. say okay. Jean, he said okay. Give it a rest. Okay. I was. <laughs> oh, hey, what is that? You can like hold the right. the right. The right click button. The man Jesus. ponders his. Say masculine, fucking hell, and it will bring up the thing. Oh, hey, there you are. Hi, gendarme. Another rendezvous. <laughs> Hi, hello, adjust your tie. I see you found yourself a little something from my wardrobe. Not bad, oh. not bad at all. What brings you here? What is it about he, the way he car carries himself? Plus one, he's so different. It's the sports. He's a sports guy. All about that physical prowess and athletic skill. Composure. Nothing else here. <laughs> what are you doing here? Admiring the atmosphere. What about you, officer? I live here. My room is right upstairs. This is where I'm going to go down in history. I'm going to sing karaoke. I'm here to kick some ass and solve the case I'm working on. I don't know what I'm doing here. I just wherever, wherever life takes me. I'm going to kick some ass about karaoke. Really? Well, I look forward to that. <laughs> Tell me again about that muscular type who came to investigate the crime. Oh yes, let's see. He knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building, asking questions. What do you tell him? What did he look like? Was he alone? What do you tell him? Nothing. That I didn't see anything. And he believed you? Why shouldn't he? Did you tell him about your friend? What friend? Your Sunday friend, the witness. No. I don't think it came up. What did he look like? Muscular. Handsome. Strong, 
Like one of those military types. Was he alone? Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his earpiece. E his earpiece? Yes, you know those tiny speaker microphones that fancy security guards sometimes wear. Why did, what, what was he saying? Just reporting back whatever I was telling him. Besides muscular, did he have anything, any other in identifying traits? Oh, uh, let me think. He had an accent. He sounded like one of those mercenaries. He sounded vaguely Oranese. No, not vaguely, scratch that. He sounded definitely Oranese. Thanks for the information. Sure. Anything else on your mind? I met your Sunday friend. You did? <laughs> and how did you like him? You were right. He was magical. Magically bureaucratic. Didn't like him as much as I like you. I didn't. He's a government official. I don't trust governments. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Why not? Who is he? What are you, you two? Why was he staying at your place in the middle of the night? I don't want to talk to other people. I want to talk about you. Why was he staying at your place in the middle of the night? He has keys. And he likes the view. To the sea, I mean. Who is he? A visitor from the first world. He's not like you and me, gendarme. He can always return. Return where? To his opportunities in Occident. So <sighs> okay. Still. His coming and going brings some life to the village. Or is it just money? I don't know. Where are you, you two? Friends, I told you. Sunday friends. Friends who like to get together from time to time. What does it mean, a Sunday friend? <sighs> that he won't be there when times get tough. I guess. Is that even a friend? It is. On Sundays. <laughs> I don't want to talk to other people. I want to talk to uh, about you. Mm -hmm. What about me, gendarme? About this hat I'm wearing. You can keep it. I don't mind. I can appreciate beauty when I see it. I wasn't really planning on giving it back anyway. Thanks. It's like carrying a piece of you with me all the times. I took it to blend in. I'm on the cover, you see? Blend in where? A carnival? <laughs> bye bye, gendarme. Is it time? Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. Mm, it's not time. Hey. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Yeah, we got left behind from, by the circus. Hmm. I found someone who saw the hanging, a witness. A witness? You ain't got shit. The locals would never come to you with this. That's just Koptakti status. Next, he's gonna tell you one of us already roll on the others. <laughs> and he's in witness protection. My witness isn't a local. Well, let's hear it then. Who is your mystery fella? Oh no. This goes without saying, but nonetheless, don't give out his name. Charles be the one. High-ranking government official from rule rule the sand said that that that. Let's just say he's a high-ranking government official and that that. Who he is is irrelevant. It's like you said, Al. Copper's coming up with this on the spot. There is no witness. I've seen this shit a million times, Titus. Oh god. Fly fishing. They are desperate. The last copper. What Wacky claims did he make? The witness said the, the hanging went down very quietly. No shouting, no commotion. The witness said he saw two people of Areopagite descent and one of Mesk. The witness said it all looked like a surreal play. The witness said it went quietly. It's you assholes that feel the need to go around like a fucking brass band. The Hardy Boys are dead silent. Yeah, <laughs> it's like they put cowbells on you before they send you to the streets. What's with the cowbells, policemen? <laughs> They're avoiding having to answer this question. I'd imagine you guys drinking and singing lynching songs. What's with the funeral silence? We were drinking, weren't we, guys? I hit the bottle hard. I was drunk as fuck. <laughs> right, I'm convinced, Glenn. Nothing off here. Just a regular hanging. Bullseye. <laughs> Glenn looks around uncomfortably. The lieutenant hit a nerve. The witness said he saw two people of a blah 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 and one of mess. Arabic guy? <laughs> Boss. I think he's trying to save me and Theo. Well, yeah. What is confusing you? Eugene, Theo, and Elaine were there, too. I already told you. We were all there. The witness said it all looks like a surreal play. That means absolutely nothing to me. <laughs> Sounds like some made-up horse shit. It means the whole scene was long and drawn out, like it was from a film. What is this fella's problem? <laughs> Sorry we didn't make it more action-packed. It wasn't the first thing on our minds, you see? Shanky. It's Shanky, right? <laughs> I thought there's something wrong about the lynching story. 
Now I know there was. You don't know shit. <laughs> I know you are lying, Shenki. <laughs> Actually, nothing. Great witness. So much bluster to hide the fact that they're uncomfortable with you having this info. Authority, you can establish. Hold on. I know I have some more stuff that has authority. I know I have like some uh, stuff here. Rhetoric, electrochemistry, physical, spirit the core, drama, drama, minus authority. Something here has to give me authority. Minus two authority. Okay. Sorry, man. Looks like the circus left him, but the clowns are still here. I am going to try that check, that white check. It's godly? Fuck it. Establish authority. Yes. No! Authority. Feverish thoughts race through your mind. <laughs> Keep my need, you're gone. <laughs> First you tell me someone's been, and then you say they don't say who. That's bullshit. I'm the only thing keeping this town from going to hell, and you're not helping. That's it, that's all I got. Kim, I need your gun. Fuck, I want to do that, but I don't. That's it, that's all I got. Did you already try the gun thing? I hear the gun thing is excellent and has great results. It does not. You're probably right. The others are only there for filler. To make the gun thing pop. <laughs> well, that's bullshit. Stop shitting your pants. You don't need to know, all right? We took care of it. The law handled it, all right? Yeah. Aren't you listening? It's done. Finito. You're not the law. I am the law. I guess we're both the law around here if you start to think about it. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm not the law after all. Maybe everyone's been lying to me. What? Now you're in some kind of personal crisis <laughs> right in front of us. Take this esoteric shit out of my bar. I assure you, there is no crisis. <laughs> we have questions, that's all. There is little left to salvage. Did I not tell you to pick the right option? Shut up. Wanna talk about hanging? <laughs> Good one, Titus. Why don't I just arrest you? Yeah, lawman. Why don't you? It's almost an anthropological sight, watching him try to assert dominance over you. <laughs> not in the arresting mood? By your side, the lieutenant keeps his hand away from his holster. You hear the nylon of his coat hiss as he steps closer. <laughs> Easy. Walk back from the provocation. They're armed, and they outnumber us. The lieutenant tries to establish eye contact with you. Easy now, let's just talk. Wise move. You made the right choice there. Now make another one. And get the fuck out of our booth. We're not gonna do this again. Fine, no more questions. About fucking. About fucking. <laughs> Good God. Alright, I'm gonna get my trusty ledger back on. And I'm going to stop for tonight. Because I am about to sneeze really badly and I am dying about it. <laughs> Well, actually, let me sneeze. Good God. <laughs> but all right, all right. Um, yeah, that's gonna be it for me for today. We did a lot, actually, and we are on our third day. It is Wednesday, my dudes, and we have to... We have to close the water lock, so we're gonna be doing that tomorrow. No, not tomorrow, next Monday. But I am enjoying myself, and we didn't open the door, so we have to go open the door this time. Next time, so. Yeah, still though. Thank you all for coming, and I hope you enjoyed yourselves this time with uh, this Coalition. It's always a fucking blast. Time to save the game. And uh, nothing tomorrow, but on... Uh, Thursday and Friday we're doing Castlevania again but this time it's Curse of Darkness because uh, the people have spoken I guess so I have to go set that up <laughs> alright thank you for coming and see you on Thursday bye bye